How are faith and rationality related? Is it rational to have faith? These are the kinds of questions we're exploring in this video. And first of all, just broadly speaking, let's address this question. What is it to be rational? Now we can mean different things when we use the word rational, but here are some suggestions. Generally speaking, somebody is rational if they have these qualifications. Their beliefs are coherent. That is, they don't have contradictory beliefs. The beliefs fit together without implying a contradiction with another belief. There's correspondence with their beliefs and the world. The beliefs are related to the way the world is so that if it's snowing and you believe it's snowing, there is that correspondence of belief that is rational to have. Priorities. We are concerned with beliefs that are important. So somebody might have a coherent set of beliefs and those beliefs may correspond with the world, but if they're continually thinking about and acting on be beliefs that are not important, we don't consider them to be rational. So for example, if somebody is just obsessed with what time it is, so they're just constantly thinking, it is now 10.01, 22. It is now 10.01, 27. And that, those sets of beliefs are just not important to have continually. If one's always focused on what the CBS television schedule is, for example, then that's not rational. Behavior needs to be in conformity with the beliefs that somebody has. So if somebody believes that exercise is important for living a healthy life, and it's a high priority for them to live a healthy life, then they should be exercising. That would be the rational thing to do. Your behavior needs to fit in with the beliefs that you have. And then finally, flexibility of beliefs. Now this may sound a little odd, but beliefs need to be able to respond to evidence broadly construed. So when some, someone encounters evidence contrary to one's beliefs, depending on the degree of evidence, you should change your belief. If you believe that it's snowing and then you look out the window and it's not, you don't see any snow, you should change your belief. You should no longer believe that it's snowing. So our beliefs system needs to be flexible in those kinds of ways. Now let's continue this uh, concern about what is it to be rational by asking this question. How do we form our beliefs? What, where do our beliefs come from? And there are many, many sources for our beliefs. Our sense is broadly construed. What we see, what we hear, what we taste, touch, and smell, these help us form our beliefs. Arguments, whether they're, they be inductive or deductive, whatever the form that might take, arguments might convince us to form new beliefs or to reject beliefs that we have. Our experience more broadly construed, uh, going to a new town and forming beliefs about that town, for example. Authority, we have many beliefs that we hold on the basis of some authority. So for example, beliefs about chemistry uh, primarily comes from teachers. For most people who don't spend their time in labs, you believe things that the chemist tells you. You believe that DNA is composed of carbon and nitrogen and oxygen and hydrogen in, in various combinations. Not that you've ever broken down DNA and studied it to confirm that, but you have authorities that have told you that, and that's fine. Reason itself, just contemplation, thinking, considering your priorities, considering what your behavior should be like. Persuasive people certainly affect our beliefs, and that can be for good or for bad. Our memories, of course, we rely on memories to, for our beliefs. Now, in terms of general rational standards, 
there seems to be no reason to hold religious beliefs to a different standard of rationality than any other beliefs. It seems reasonable that our religious beliefs ought to be rational in the same way that our other beliefs are rational as we've considered our sources of beliefs and what it is to be rational. So now to the question, what is it to have faith? Now, our context here is religious faith, but note that there's a difference between belief that God exists, because even demons would have that kind of a belief, presuming, of course, there is a God and demons exist, right? And belief in God. So demons don't believe in God in terms of having faith in God, trusting their lives to God, but they believe that God exists. So there seems to be a difference there. We're still going to focus on the epistemological concern. Primarily, that's what we're focusing on, this epistemological term, faith. But usually, faith is going to involve the way one acts as well. So we could believe in all kinds of things besides God. So faith could apply to anything. Some people have faith in a leader, for example, a political leader or a leader of an organization. Some people have faith in a friend or their spouse or a significant other. Some people have faith in a political party that they will do much better if they hold the power in office. A sports team. Some people have faith that their team is going to pull it out even if they're behind toward the end of the game. Some people have faith in a community of people. Uh, President Obama in a farewell speech talked about having faith in the people of America. Uh, some, you know, we have belief in one's fellow countrymen, for example. So faith could apply to a wide variety of, of things, even when we're referring to that faith in something, when the concern about whether the thing exists is not the issue. But focusing on the epistemological concerns, and in particular, again, faith in terms of religious belief, belief that God exists, what are the alternatives that might be proposed? Some people might say that faith is believing while lacking proof. Now, an immediate question comes to mind here, how strong of proof? I mean, if you hold the standards of proof really high, it becomes hard to prove that other minds exist besides yourself. It becomes hard to prove that your senses are reliable because you have to rely on your senses to confirm that your senses are reliable. So if you hold your standards really high, you can't even prove that you're not a brain in the vat or in the matrix. So um, possibility doesn't seem the right kind of thing. Um, this doesn't seem to be the right kind of idea. You could believe things where you don't have this super high standard of proof and be rational. How about believing when arguments and evidence are inconclusive? Now that seems like a good, reasonable definition of faith when we're talking about our normal epistemology. We'll give some examples here as we go on. But other people have said, no, 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 faith is believing without any reason whatsoever. You have no reason to believe, no experiences, uh, nothing that's happened in your past, no arguments whatsoever, and yet still you believe. Now, this is an odd way of thinking about faith in terms of religious belief. Certainly people who believe in God would have some of those reasons that we just mentioned. So this doesn't seem to be an appropriate way of, of identifying faith. And then finally, if we go with someone like Richard Dawkins, he says faith is believing despite cumulative strong evidence to the contrary. Well, that's Dawkins. It certainly isn't the way that most religious people talk about faith. This is not uh, the way that people think about believing in God. So for religious belief of these four alternatives that we've suggested, it seems that 
to be charitable to both sides of the issues, that is theists and atheists, it seems like B is going to be the best description of what it is to have faith, what it is to believe in God or believe that God exists. Now, the reason we ruled out A, just to clarify here, that applies to nearly all of our beliefs about the world, right? To, to, we don't have that super strong standard of proof for all of our beliefs. So that would mean that we would, every belief we have is a matter of faith. So, but that doesn't make sense. We don't want that to be the case. So we ruled out A for that reason. Um, of course, C uh, doesn't seem to be the case, certainly with religious belief. There are a lot of reasons that people have to believe, even if you're talking to a lay person who hasn't pondered the philosophical arguments for belief, they still can provide some reasons for their belief. And certainly, um, most people don't think there is strong evidence to the contrary of what they believe about God. So those two things, C and D, certainly don't fit with what we've seen of believers. Now, a couple of comparisons to make. It seems that religious beliefs are somewhat comparable to political beliefs in this sense. I mean, what in terms of rationality would distinguish traditional religious beliefs from political beliefs, such as uh, that capital punishment is good for a society when carefully applied, or contrary, capital punishment is bad for a society, even if carefully applied. Uh, reducing taxes will have a positive effect on society, or increasing taxes. Now, according, of course, we could go into nuances on whom you are reducing taxes and on whom you're increasing taxes and that you might have different responses to that but but you understand the general idea we have people have varying beliefs about this income inequality indicates that there are unjust policies that need corrected some people explicitly claim that that's true some say it doesn't mean that it's necessarily true that we have policies that have to be corrected just because there is as a matter of fact, income inequality. So in all of these cases, there is evidence and there are good arguments that can provide, be provided for both sides of the issue. And certainly informed, intelligent, and rational people take opposing sides. And that's comparable to religious belief. So it doesn't seem like religious belief in that sense is that different from other areas like forming political beliefs. Now, note that it is in contrast to belief in astrology, say, or that tarot cards will reveal one's character, right? Those have strong evidence against them, and there's little or no evidence in their support, and you don't have a large number of intelligent, rational, informed people who believe in these things. So it doesn't mean that anything goes, right, when we, we include these kinds of beliefs where there is disagreement, it certainly doesn't mean that anything goes. But it allows for having faith, believing in something, even when there are conflicting ideas about what's correct. This also applies to philosophical beliefs, just to name a few, we could go on and on with these, that humans can act freely, that there are objective moral principles, that human minds are entirely physical. Now, similar to political beliefs, evidence and good arguments can be provided for both sides of this issue, and informed, intelligent, and rational people take opposing sides. And so philosophical beliefs, political beliefs, it seems to be just as rational to have faith in God as it is to have some of these political beliefs or philosophical beliefs in terms of conflicting evidence and so on. So we shouldn't just rule out the idea that faith is rational based on standard epistemological criteria. Now, one more comment about this is what we might call doxastic freedom. Doxa has to do with beliefs, 
uh, orthodox, right, straight beliefs, literally speaking. Uh, freedom. Do we have the freedom to believe whatever we want? Now, sometimes it's kind of presumed that you're free to believe one way or the other in regards to, say, the philosophical beliefs we've mentioned, the political beliefs we've mentioned, and the religious beliefs we've mentioned. But broadly speaking, our freedom to believe whatever we want is actually very limited. Now, that's a, that's a good thing. So, for example, right now, uh, if you are indoors, it, you can't just start to believe that you are out in the mountains, sitting on the, the edge of a, a cliff or something like that. Uh, you, don't, you can't just choose to believe that. Your senses just overwhelm you and you, are, you can't actually believe that. And that's the case with all kinds of other beliefs. You can't just choose to believe that two plus two equals five. You can't just choose to believe that you're a lot taller or a lot shorter than you actually are. All kinds of beliefs that we have, the majority of the beliefs that we have are not really under our control. So uh, the number of people in the room near, with you is, are there any other people in the room? Is it cool in the room where you're at or wherever you at? Is there a bus coming or other noises from outside? Your beliefs about those things are pretty much out of your control. Again, that's a good thing. We don't want to start to be able to believe there is no bus when there is a bus and that obviously would lead to trouble if you're crossing the street. So we often simply find ourselves believing something. And often these beliefs are reliable and legitimate, rational to have. These are helpful, they're not irrational, even though they may not be supported by argumentation, um, even though they may not be beliefs that are widely held. And many who have religious faith report having experiences that result or in or reinforce belief in God. And they just have this belief in God as a result of those kinds of experiences. And that's consistent with other well-established and carefully evaluated beliefs that they have. So there, there's that internal coherence that we talked about. It corresponds to the way they experience the world. It is one of their priorities, maybe. So someone clearly could be rational, and have faith. Those two are definitely not opposed.